Wasn't that beautiful? <laughs> okay. I will be working on trying to get better music for that. <laughs> I was just excited that I learned how to do it. And thank you, Carrie, for telling me that the music was choppy. Because apparently I was supposed to share my sound. I don't know. Anyway, that was our first time doing that fun stuff. Pretty cool, right? That is why we are in Tech Tuesday. I am learning too. So um, anyway, how, how's everybody doing? Got some energy? Did you get your pre-workout in? All the good stuff, coffee. All right, ready, caffeinated, ready to learn. All right, we are going to be talking about list reports and loan calculators today. A um, Couple of my favorite thing, because number one, list reports is free, right? And it has some amazing tools that we are going to learn how to use. And then uh, loan calculators. Everybody needs loan calculators because not that we're supposed to be quoting our buyers what their payment will be, but it's really important to kind of know the general idea of where they would be at for this house so that you know if you are shopping for something that is some they, something they can't afford, right? You don't want to have them falling in love with something they can't afford. So I use mine all the time. So anyway, we have a special guest, um, John Drennan, in the house. He is my lender. I've been using him for about 15 years, and he is amazing. I have never not closed a deal with him on the other side. And it, for those of you who have worked with several different lenders know that not all lenders are created equal, right? Right. Uh, there are some really terrible ones out there, so I just choose to work with the good ones, and he's definitely one of them. So um, he's going to be on the call to chat with you guys about, um, you know, mortgages, answer questions. So please write down any lender questions you have for the last part of this um, class. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna hop right into list reports um, after John says a couple words. And then uh, we'll go back to uh, John and we're going to talk about how he's licensed in like 20 different states. No, I'm kidding. Okay. Not 20 yet, but tw almost 20. Anyway, so Joanne's going to put the states that he is licensed in the chat so that if you guys need a good lender partner, um, he can definitely uh, work with you. So, um, and even if he doesn't do loans in your state, he is super knowledgeable about every program. So, so uh, feel free to definitely ask all the questions. That's what he's here. Okay, John, you want to say a couple words before we hop into list reports? Uh, yes, I do. Good morning, everyone. Hopefully, hopefully everybody's uh, warm. It's been kind of freezing cold out here in Las Vegas. And I know that's kind of funny, but when it's <laughs> uh, 37 degrees and you're sitting at the baseball field at 7 a.m. yesterday morning, like I was, Man, it's cold. <laughs> you got to have multiple layers on. So um, once again, my name is John Drennan. I'm the sales manager of Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation in Las Vegas. I've been doing this for 26 years and I'm licensed in 15 states, close, Wendy. Uh, but I am working on a, a, a 16th as we speak. I already got the CE, uh, pre-licensing CE, I should say, um, currently. And that's going to be South Carolina. So Joanna, you can add South Carolina to that upcoming list. Uh, that'll take a probably another week to get finished. And then the state will just have to get me going. Uh, I've been working with Wendy for many, many years, been out here in Las Vegas uh, since 2002, started in Cincinnati where I graduated University, University of Cincinnati in 1998 and been doing it ever since nonstop. Uh, this is what I do. Uh, I'm an early riser. I have children. So uh, working East Coast, West Coast, anywhere in between uh, is not an issue. Um, do a lot of business. Uh, almost 20% of my business last year was outside the state of Nevada. So uh, it's not something where it's like, hey, this guy's got a bunch of licenses just to have them. Uh, I try to use them and uh, I, I get to use about 70% of the states each and every year. And that's why I'm continuing to grow that footprint. Um, yes, Wendy and I have known each other for many, many years. Knock on wood, we've never had a deal that um, did not close because of financial reasons. We do a lot of due diligence up front. Uh, we want to cross T's dot I's. I really appreciate Wendy saying, you know, not all lenders are the same. I do take phone calls seven days a week. Uh, I return emails, text messages. It uh, doesn't matter. Um, if I'm in the middle of something, I just kind of reply and say, hey, I'll call you back. I just want to be the guy, uh, the go-to guy. 
uh, on my team is just myself and my transaction coordinator, Patience Harris. She might come in a little bit, depending on any questions about technology. She is the queen uh, who's running the ship for me. Uh, she is awesome. She sets everybody up on list reports. Uh, we also have the Fairway Now app, and that's uh, what we were talking about. We're going to talk about today, uh, part of the calculator. On the chat, I put my email address and I put my phone number and my name. Feel free to uh, send me your information. Uh, after we put all the states in, um, let me know if there's a state that you're licensed in and, and uh, maybe I can look into it. If not, Fairway's license in all 50 states, I can find a um, market leader in your uh, region and it, do a formal introduction for you um, so you guys have that too. Uh, do a lot of social media. Uh, please follow me. Uh, we'll also, uh, anybody who sends me an email, we'll send you all of our links. I do YouTube videos, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook. I try to get all the information out there. Uh, for the state of Nevada, we do a lot of- I even classes. saw John on TikTok. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. So just doing a lot of different things. And, and I really base myself on two aspects. Number one is straight education. I just want to be the guy who, like, I appreciate Wendy saying, I know everything. I don't. Uh, if you have, like, a unique uh, bond question, I may have to investigate that. But I try to be the guy who has uh, the ability to answer your questions or get the answer as quickly as possible. And then the, the second part is just communication. Being available, communicate, and that's what we do. So, um, once again, all my information is on the chat. Thank you very much, Joanna, for adding all those. And, um, uh, Wendy, let's start the meeting and tell me what we need to do because I got – my Fairway Now app, and we got list reports up here on my network. So, you know, the, the, the sky's the limit, all right? All right. So we're just going to hop into my list reports. And uh, I'm going to show you a couple really cool things. So, um, so starting here at the home screen kind of gives you a bunch of overview about everything that's in here. But I like shareables. I'm a social media girl. So uh, they have daily shareables, right, uh, that you can literally click on and then post it right to your social media. It even gives you ad copy, you know, because a lot of people don't know what to say when they post something, but you could do uh, your listings, make your own daily, weekly, notable local housing market. Let's look at that, right? So it already knows your market. It already knows where you are. And so there's a bunch of different uh, ones, like let's look at this one. So this one is cute, right? Local market report for here. You can change this to, let's say, Olive Henderson. Uh, Henderson, apparently there's a lot of Henderson, Nevada ad. So now see how it says Henderson? So that's how you change that. So you could do zip code, you can do a uh, city, uh, probably county, maybe neighborhood. Anyway, so you type that in there and it automatically calculates everything for you. Then you can go through here and say, okay, maybe I like this one better. Ooh, or maybe I like this one better. Yeah, you could do this and post a different kind, right? Every Monday, Monday market update. There you go. There's your update, <laughs> right? So anyway, you just kind of click on it. And then right here, you could choose your branding. You can uh, create your own. Uh, I like, I like teal and you can add the market is changing by the minute or you can, um, do something new, but that is going to go at the top there. And then all of your information is going to be right there because you're going to fill out your profile. Right. So then right here, copy caption. So all you have to do is do that. Click share. And then click Control V, there's your caption, right? Maybe add it to your story, post. How amazing is that, right? So anyway, um, that, that is posting to Facebook, but you can also click share, share it to LinkedIn, send it in an email, copy this and put it wherever you want. You can download it, whatever. So those are pretty cool. And then, uh, but there's a lot of different ones. That was just market report. So they have um, all kinds of good stuff. Like, uh, let's see, list packs. Oh, I like list packs. Homes with pools. It has my little logo right there. Homes with pools presented by me, right? And then let's say it's going to find all the pool homes in this area. So we're going to say, let's say Las Vegas. 
So then uh, it's going to pull all the pool homes in Las Vegas right there. Choose your branding. Again, you can do whatever you want, right? Whatever branding you want. And then you just copy the caption and share. And then they could actually start shopping for pool homes in Las Vegas. So that's that's how easy those are. And you could do it for anything like homes with views, upgraded kitchens. I don't know how they figured that out. But anyway, condos and townhouses. Newer homes built 2010 or newer. Homes with great schools. I know we're not really supposed to say that. So I don't know how that's legal either. But anyway, open houses. Here's your open house list. So say you want to, you know, tell everybody where all the open houses are and let them know that, you know, if they're interested in any of them to give you a call, you can uh, pull them all right from there. Uh, lower priced homes. High-end homes, new listings. New listings is good. People like to know what's newly listed on the market or homes that have been on the market for 60 days. You know what I mean? Those might be good deals. You'll probably get your closing costs paid if you go after those. So anything like that is a good idea to post. So instead of saying, I don't know what to post, I don't have any good ideas. Well, this report gives you ideas. So Anyway, those are uh, shareables there, um, but here's the categories, buying, selling, home tips. Look at all those home tips. I know. It's just like content for you, right? Uh, financial tips, if you want to give people that. Holidays, education, inspiration, good times are here to come, awesome agents. Anyway, you get the gist. So those are shareables. Marketing kits. So this is my favorite thing. Um, we have marketing kits on all of our listings set up. That way we can, let's look at Karen Avenue. So this one here, we can go right to our just listed stuff. We could do it like open house, under contract, recently sold. So you could go to any of those uh, for shareable medias, right? So Let's say you want to do a just listed post. When you click through here, it's automatically going to upload photos from the listing. So you can explore the area, stuff like that. Anyway, so then you can share them, right? That goes right back to those, but it also has a little website. So these are the websites you can click on. This is what it's going to look like and you can share this website. So this is gonna be about the home, photo gallery, explore the area, financial information, meet your agent and meet your loan officer. So that's kind of cool because you guys are partners with your lender. So this way they know about you, they know about your lender, and then uh, financial information, explore the area. I like this, even though this is a high rise downtown. So these, uh, probably aren't going to be the best schools. Shh. You can actually take out the school stuff. Uh, and, and I've did that before, you know, so there is an option where you can remove the school information because, uh, you know, sometimes you, you don't want to advertise that you're in a two rating school zone anyway, but it's very convenient. Look at all the coffee shops and the gym and the gas stations, you know, and then the great outdoors, so I, I like that it has all this stuff. And for, you know, a normal listing that's not a high rise in Las Vegas, um, that's really good stuff to know. So, and then your photo gallery will be here as well. So they could always cruise through all of your listing photos. And then, uh, and then about the home. So anyway, so that is your, um, that's your website for the property. You can also do uh, property flyers right through here. So if you have an open house, you definitely want to tap into the open house because boom, it automatically puts it all right in there. As soon as you enter the open house information, it'll be right on your flyer. And then boom, your flyer is all ready for you. And you can do this on any anybody's listing. So say you're doing an open house for another agent, you're just gonna pop in the address and it's gonna auto populate um, a report for you. And then your information is going to be on here, you know, so it's going to be for like you. 
So you could do that um, if you want. And then infographics are right here. You can also order postcards right through here, panoramic postcards, and then um, lead capturing. So we have we have these sign writers on our signs. Uh, I recreated them a little bit because you know me, I like to be different, um, but they're really cool. And uh, when someone types in this text code to this phone number, uh, you automatically get their phone number. <laughs> it's kind of sneaky kind of sneaky. So this actually allows you to contact them and see if they want to see the house. So anyway, um, text to lead codes, you can put those on all of your listings. And then the open house sign in sheet looks kind of like this. And, um, and yeah, you just got to print it out, have people fill it out. And there you go. So that is that portion. So marketing kits. That was that, and then market insights. Like I said, you can go in and look at the insights for all of your areas. Um, that way you can know exactly what you're trying to say. Here's more in depth of list packs that I was showing you, like the homes with pools, stuff like that. Um, and then my leads. So when you get leads from here, they go into here, my loan officer. So, Anyway, so that is list reports and you could do a lot more with it. I kind of just br browse through that just a little bit, but there's so much with this shareables. So um, does anybody have any questions about list reports right now? There one pop I, up in here saying, uh, what about lead capture? Does it, is there any lead capture in there? Yeah, so where you saw my leads, yep. It goes in there and yeah, so when someone clicks on your website or your marketing from list reports, you know, so if you post something like that, then yes, it's going to capture the lead and then you're going to reach out to them. So definitely, Michelle, good morning. Hi, you are muted. Sorry, thank you. Um, okay, so the code thing, that's part of it? Yeah. The code, so, the code thing? Oh. Yeah. So yeah, you just you have to order the sign writers. You know what I mean? Uh, yes. so so you can order them right through there, or you can have your sign company make them, whatever. But uh I have LVSH because my company used to be LV Sweet Homes. Uh so that's the code that they text to that phone number. You can create any code that you want, and then uh all your uh properties. Are right on there, so that but you can, can put that code. Some doesn't have to be a writer. We can't use those writers, but it can be uh, just a. It could be on your sheet at the. Uh huh. Okay, yep. and then um. Uh, God, what there was more questions. Oh, do you use any of those um, shareables with Street Text? Uh, no, I do not. But you can. You can absolutely. Mm -hmm. You could just take one of those market reports. Because did you see, uh, you could share it to Facebook, other, or download. So just hit download and then, yeah, upload it into street text, write your own ad copy and, you know, about the market report. And then, yeah, absolutely run ads. It'll still have the link. It'll still have, uh, well, no. So you could add the link later somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, you'll have to, when you do add street it. text, you're going to put the photo there and then it's going to yeah. ask you where you want to direct them. That's where the link will go. Cool. Thanks. But yeah, yeah, good stuff, huh? I love the market reports because I spend so much time in the MLS trying to figure out our numbers. Like, I don't have time. I don't have time for that. <laughs> it, yeah, that's great. So, it, but it doesn't break it up by, it's just by, does it break it up by, I'm sorry, I should be doing this. You can do you. zip code or city or zip neighborhood. Code. And Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, so if you want to hone in on a neighborhood, you can absolutely do that too. I don't know how accurate the neighborhood is because like, say we say Green Valley, um, we have so many communities inside Green Valley. I don't know if it would capture all of them. I would probably be more confident with zip code or um, city, just saying, but, but test it out. See if, see if the numbers match to what you can see in your MLS. So, Alyssa, good morning. How are you? Good morning. Trying to keep warm up down here in Texas. Oh my um, gosh. It's cold everywhere. Okay. Yeah, what is, is it? Winter? I know I'm in it. It's warm in my house. <laughs> um, 
So on, on the property website, are you using the one from list reports or do you use like a landing page from KB Core for your property websites? So good question. I actually use, um, I just started using my videographer photographer's property site because it's freaking amazing. I and saw I, that post. Did you? Yeah. So I'll be bringing him on to Tech Tuesday. This is perfect for free. You know what I mean? It's perfect for free, right? Yes, KV Core is also perfect for free. Like whatever you use, because uh, when you go to your listing appointment, you want to make sure that you tell your seller that your home will have its own website. That's what they want to hear. That's all they want to hear. And I just say, you know, it will tell about the area, you know, about all the good parks, you know, the outdoor activities and coffee shops, everything like that. So, so just know that that's what they want. And it's going to be specific to your address. And so anyone that you choose, whether it's KV Core or List Reports or or my guy's amazing site, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, it's just about, you know, making the seller happy that their home has their own website. Does that make sense? Yeah. You're welcome. Isabel, good morning. Good morning, Wendy. Yeah, you mentioned that you take out the school information. Um, why is that? I said, you can, I don't always like if it's in an eight, nine rated school district, heck yeah, I'm keeping it in there. If it says two, <laughs> it's out because <laughs> I don't, I mean, I know full disclosure, you should probably disclose that, but you know, uh, people, they're funny. They're like, we want to live right by the strip. And I'm like, no, you don't. No, you don't. I'm not allowed to say that. Right. I'm not allowed yeah. to say that, but yeah, okay. when you when you advertise that the home is in a two rated school district, but just doesn't look good. That's why. Yes. Okay. That's, that's the only Got thing it. I would take. Thank that you. Out. You're okay. welcome. Okay. I'm so glad this call is recorded and it's going on YouTube. I'm going to be in trouble today. <laughs> Crystal, good morning. <laughs> Hi, good morning. Well, um, thanks for adding list reports for my things that I need to figure out. Um, awesome. It looks amazing. So do we just um, like upload our MLS to get started? You kind of jumped into this and I was like, oh, wait. Um, okay, sorry. so first of all, first of all, John is here and Crystal's in Lake Tahoe. Perfect. So, yep. So uh, you can- It's actually cold and it actually, so no, not really. Um, Montana's like negative 45 and we're only like, yeah, barely breezy. It's slushy. Anyways. That's funny. Yeah. Anyway, so John can actually connect you to list reports. It's free. And then, uh, and okay. then, and then, so Joanna's putting all that information in the chat. So grab it out of the chat. That way you can uh, send him. So basically you're going to want to send him your name, company, email, phone number, address to the company, and then your picture and your logo. So that way he can, number one, get you set up on list reports, but you'll probably have to create your profile in there. But number two is what we're going to be talking about loan calculators. It's called Fairway Now. And that actually is pretty amazing. And Joanne, do you have, um, do you have your Notion page up that you can yeah. share real quick? All right, go ahead. So um, so when you get signed up with John, he can actually co-brand on, uh, go ahead and scroll down right there. So he can co-brand with you on all these really cool flyers like rent versus buy, um, sweet financing, financing options. I think he made that when I was LV Sweet Homes. Let me just tell you how cute that was. Anyway, uh, uh, the serving uh, those who serve, uh, there's divorce, um, uh, you know, jumbo loans, like uh, buyer mistakes. Like there's so many good flyers that he can co-brand with you on them. And then, uh, yeah, so once you send them all your info, Obviously, if you're in one of the states that um, that he is in, he can do this for you. If not, like he said, he has a fairway rep in all 50 states that could definitely help you out with all of this. So, um, so anyway, 
Uh, go ahead and we'll go back. So is that how, but do you have to um, hook up your MLS to do the market reports that you were showing? Yeah, so, so when he sets you up on list reports, it's going okay. to ask you questions like where you are. Uh, okay. when you're going out your profile and that's that's how they're going to know where you are so that's how they're going to pull the numbers but once you're set up in there then you don't have to do that every time you just put in the zip code that you want to do you put in the city whatever you want and it'll create it for you so I'll try that thank you you're welcome isn't that awesome okay so on to round two where are we at 825 oh I'm doing so good okay I'm going to share my uh phone so let's go here real estate and like i said you know <laughs> you're not supposed to tell buyers what their payment's going to be right so this is how i do business and this is why me and john work so well together is that i um <sighs> I don't ask John uh, what the maximum we can, uh, you know, purchase, like $500,000, you know, are we pre-approved for $500,000? I say, what is the max payment that my client qualifies for? Because the taxes are going to be different if they're buying something newer. The HOA is going to be different. Sometimes it's 50 a month. Sometimes it's zero. Sometimes it's 350, right? So, so having that cap of, oh yeah, they're pre-approved up to 500 is total BS because you don't know exactly what the payment's going to be and what they qualify for, for the payment. So I asked John, okay, so this buyer, you know, a tier one, tier two, like what, what rate are we looking at? You know, and how much payment are they qualified for? Number one, and how much payment are they comfortable with? You know what I mean? So they could qualify for a $3,000 okay. payment right? They could qualify for a $3,000 payment, but maybe they only want to spend $2,500. So you got to know all these things before you start shopping. So that way, when they pick out a bunch of houses, guess what? I'm going to do quick scenarios on them to make sure that they don't go over because I don't want to show anybody a house that they are going to fall in love with and can't afford. You know, it's like, oh, I'm really sorry. Yeah, you can't get this one. The HOA is too high after they see it. No, nope, I'm not going to break people's hearts. So that's what this calculator is for. So I just go here to calculator and then I go to new purchase. Let's say it's an FHA buyer. So I'm going to put that. And then let's say it's 350000 right? It's automatically going to tell them what their 3.5% down payment is going to be. And then let's say John gives me a rate of 65 and then uh, we'll plug in the taxes and then I'll estimate the annual insurance, which apparently went up lately. And then here's the HOA. So say it's, you know, 55 a month. So then you just calculate, oh, they're at 2587, but they only want to spend 25, you know? So knowing this number is huge, it's huge. So that's that's how I work with buyers. That's probably why we haven't ever um, lost a deal because I know exactly where they can be uh, and I make sure of it before we even look at it. So, but I mean, this $350,000 home, they may still be able to get, right? Maybe it's been on the market for 90 days. Maybe we can get it for 340, you know what I mean? Maybe we could get the seller to pay all their closing costs, something, you know, so... If they, you know, it's not too far over, but if let's say they only wanted a $2,100 payment. Yep. This one's out. This is out. You need to start shopping for, you know, less and, you know, go from there or they have to, you know, revisit their budget. So anyway, there is a whole bunch of things on here. Um, you can share this app with your people, you know, with your buyer, uh, um, I honestly only use it for the calculator. So I'm sorry if there's a whole bunch more stuff you can do, but I honestly, that's all I use it for. <laughs> that's where I was going to jump in, Wendy. I'm like, you use it for your, you know, when you're out and about, you know what the payment needs to be. Uh, we give you a quick estimate. <clears throat> 
Yeah, um, maybe we should bring patience in. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, I was playing with it. Yeah, exactly. And patience um, is the one who gets everybody set up typically. Um, and it says, how do we get the app? Just email me. Everybody who's interested, please email me and we'll get you set up and we'll send you the partner. But the one thing that I really like about it is you can track your loans. So that is a tremendous feature. If you go to loans, I have all the applications that I've sent. And then I have actually all the loans that people have actually started. So these are great tracking tools. Um, also, when you tell somebody that you're partnering with somebody without actually, quote unquote, paying for a partnership, if you share the app directly, number one, it's a great way to track, but it also shows my information, your information. So, so it shows that partnership. So there's just a great, great tools. Uh, patients actually just walked in just in case somebody asked the question. But um, the the Fairway Now is, is a tremendous tool. Um, some of the stuff that um, Wendy was actually showing a little bit, a bit ago, uh, all those flyers, that's actually a different system that's tied. That's another system that's free that we offer. Uh, you can send tons of those uh, items out via social media. You can print them. You can do postcards. You can do whatever you want. The most important thing is I've invested a lot of um, money for my partners. And that's another reason why I want to have a national reach because so many people, uh, there's a couple, one one young lady I put on here. Um, I have to use list reports on the free portion. I can't use the lender portion, which gives you more options because her lender won't pay for it. That's why I invest. And that's why I want to be, like I said, have that reach because I don't want somebody to come back and say, there's an amazing tool, but you can't provide it because of a money situation. Oh, I didn't know that. So you can actually sign up for list reports without a lender, but you don't get all that. That's what a couple of people had said. But one one of the persons uh, also mentioned that there's there's tools within uh, list reports that will only be available if you're aligned with a lender. That's what somebody said. Right. So I like uh, John being on all of my stuff because I am not a lender and I don't want to answer those questions. And you shouldn't. You shouldn't be answering lender questions. You know, obviously we need to know enough to not hurt ourselves, but um, legally you shouldn't be answering lender questions or rate questions or anything like that. So just, I like to have him on there. That way they have his contact info all the time. You know what I mean? And then when I actually get a buyer, what I do that works really well is I put him and Joanna, my assistant, and me and the client, like all on a group chat. And I'll be like, John, meet Mike. Mike, meet John, you know, and here we go. This is the situation. This is what we want to do. Let's go. And the thing is, is when you do that, instead of giving a buyer the lender's number or giving John the buyer's number so they could chase each other forever, hell no, I'm here to sell a house, right? I'm here to get people pre-approved, get them into contract and close the deal and deliver keys. That's my job. So doing that, if it's not with John, make sure you're doing that with your lender. You know what I mean? That is so important. Group chats, group chats. And I know not everybody likes group chats. Who cares? Get over it. <laughs> well, it also holds everybody accountable because if we're on a group yeah. text and you say, hey, meet Mike. And then I say, hey, Mike, nice to meet you. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, are you available this afternoon for a call? And he ghosts me. Wendy's like, oh, no, no, don't ghost my guy. So then Wendy yep. jumps back in there, um, you know, or we set up times. So it's just a great way for tracking. Once again, the, the, with the Fairway Now apps, kind of similar. You can see what's going on with your loans. You get updates throughout the process. And uh, we want to, we don't hide behind technology, but we want to use technology so that you're up to date and you know what's going on pretty much at all times. But um, uh, but we're always going to be on a phone call you know, 8 a.m. in the morning here in Vegas, we're, we're on a Tech Tuesday with tons of people just wanting to get more information to, you know, be a stronger realtor. Awesome. Michelle, good morning. Another question. So I just put in listing in list reports. This is off the financing topic. Sorry. And so do I have to feed all those images in or does it pull it from the MLS? Yeah. So if you're tied to your MLS and you type in the address and it is active, Okay. It's active on the market. It will pull them in and you can pick from those. Uh, if it's not active, like say you're doing a coming soon, which you can, uh, then you have to manually put them in. Okay. So, uh, so the, I'll know if my lender, cause it's still processing. It's been processing for like 10 minutes. So will does that take a long time or will I know? Okay. Right. So my lender hasn't set me up in the MLS probably. 
what do you mean your lender hasn't? So uh, when you go to your profile in list reports, does it ask you like oh. what MLS you're a part of? Because that's that's probably where it's going to need to be. Yep. Or or setting. Okay. So it's, it's nothing that she's done or does. She just signed me up. She didn't have to do anything. I do all that. Yeah. So set up your profile, your picture, your logo, all the good stuff. And then, yeah, okay. definitely say where you are. I believe that's it. I haven't set my profile up in like 10 years. So sorry. Um, oh, but I believe crazy. that's where you're going to put it. And then it's going to say what part of MLS or city or something. And that's what's going to tie to it. Is Patience Oh, oh I guess I did do that. Weird. Yep. Patience is right here. So is that correct? Yes. Yeah. We well, can okay. change a certain number of things on our end, mm -hmm. but you should have full access to change your photo. Well, I put it in there. That's weird. Photo. I don't know. I'll have to keep looking. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> no problem. All right, Claire. Good morning. I can't hear you. Potential clients would come to me, and they were so open to the lenders I suggested, which I love working with my preferred lenders. Do you have a script for that? Because it seems like almost every buyer I get now, they're all pre-qualified and they have their own lender and it's they don't even want to talk to anybody else. Right. Which, you know, I understand that. I understand that. And if I have a full conversation with their lender and they say they've already submitted their taxes, their pay stubs, their everything, mm -hmm. and we've already reviewed it, we only need a property, you know, and uh, and I feel good about it. I won't, I won't sit there and say you need to talk to my lender. You know, but if it's a, I applied online on the internet and I got this printout, like, I'm going to be like, okay, well, yeah, good start. Good start. <laughs> but, you know, we definitely want to make sure if you find the home that you love, that we can actually deliver keys. So, like so would it be possible for you to talk to my lender? He's local. He knows everything. And uh, he has a lot of different programs. And, ready to take and a trip with us. And he's not going to tell you that you're pre-approved until he looks at everything. Mm, okay. You know what I mean? Okay. And I yeah. just say, you know, uh, anybody could go on the internet and get one of those letters. I want to make sure you're solid. You I, know? I have and the biggest thing with that is what people think they make and what we can qualify them are tremendously different. So really, you know, if you have a, a lender, it doesn't have to be local. If you just have a lender that you know his or her process, which our process is very, very thorough up front. And that's why we've been able to be 100% successful uh, financially on each and every client for the last 15 years of Wendy's is we do all of our due diligence up front. Uh, if they say, hey, I've done, you call the lender, I'm working with Susie, I've done all my due diligence, verified, validated, all the income assets, credit. Even though you're a preferred lender, somebody you know and trust, you don't want to lose that buyer. But on the flip side, I agree with Wendy. People plug in that information, you know, the online now, they're like, we'll get your pre-approval letter in 90 seconds. Well, who's validating all that? Okay. And it's just, it's just too risky. And then you go out there and you shop and it's not real. So. Uh, right. And the good thing. That. Yeah. With the good thing with our process too, is that sometimes we can even fully underwrite them and close in two weeks. And then all the time. Office. Yeah. We have right now $20 million in my branch only. We have $20 million in fully underwritten loans with clients trying to buy houses nationwide, just in my branch. So we do that. There's four, there's four aspects to every loan income, assets, credit, house, I can get these three done. And then all you have to do is go out there, find a house. And, um, you know, depending on the appraisal time, turn times in your area, depending on um, uh, inspection times, things like that. But Wendy's 100% right. We get loans closed in 10 to 15 days all day long. Um, sometimes you don't need to, even if we're fully vetted, sometimes we're sitting here twiddling our thumbs because it's just a standard 30 day escrow. Uh, I, have awesome. I have an alternative answer to that question. And I make it personal. I say, you go shop for the best price for the appliance you want. You choose out of gas stations on the corner. You choose the cheapest gas station. So why not invest in, in, in on a gas tank? You'll save 3 to $5. Why not save thousands by getting the better interest rate? Shop your lenders. Uh, that's how I get them off their lender to give my lender an opportunity. But make it personal in savings. Good approach. Great idea. And we're very aggressive. Uh, Wendy and I do lots and lots of deals where... Um, she gets the windy special. So we get real aggressive on our programs, excluding bond programs or government assistance. Those are, are mandated. They tell us what to offer and what we can charge. Uh, but yeah, we we get really, really aggressive 
uh, in all of our markets. So um, um, that's a very, very applicable point. Awesome. All right. That was Claire, right? You good? Okay. Niam, good morning. How are you? Good morning. Uh, my So I have list reports as well, but I've never saw the loan calculator portion. Is that only on the app? Um, yes, or, that's the fair yeah, way now. So I showed you two different things. So yeah. I showed you list reports and then I showed you this fair way now app on my phone. So, oh. and that's what has the loan calculator. That's what I use. Um, so, so yeah, two different programs. Right. Yeah. And just email me yeah. if you're interested in it, then we can get the link sent out to everybody. Um, it can be a great tool, even if you're using someone else. And you just want to use that as a calculator, feel free. Uh, if it's in any of the 15 states I'm licensed in right now, I can send it out. That's Georgia. not an issue. And you uh, um, Georgia? Yeah. I don't do Georgia because they have a stupid rule where the um, my website has to have the name Fairway in it. And my website's been around for a long time. I'd lose the data. But I actually have an amazing loan officer in my office here. Her name is Rachel. And uh, I've actually introduced her to a couple of people in Georgia. So if you send me your information, I can do a formal introduction. And she's really good. Just like Wendy sent me a client yesterday or over the weekend. I talked to him yesterday. Um, he's good, looking to relocate to St. George, Utah. I have a, our branch has a branch in Cedar City, Utah. So they're connecting today. Um, New York City, I have a great guy. I think his name is Renee. Um, did some uh, reciprocation business. So once again, I got people in major uh, markets. Um, just everybody just email me. Uh, just let me know what uh, um, whatever I can do to help and introduce you to great fairway people um, in whatever market you're in if I can't do the loan. Okay, that's awesome. Yes, I think you hooked Tamika up, right? Yes, uh, Tamika and uh, Gia, I think were introduced yeah. to Rachel. Yeah. yeah, last week. And uh, whoever just wrote this, um, the one, the chat, that's a great thing. You know, crunch time milestones. The Fairway is is the company that has been known to pick up the pieces. I mean, you can't close a loan in one day by disclosing purposes, but we're talking, we have, I, I see it all the time on our blogs here internally, where we pick up a, a builder deal that dies in Des Moines, Iowa. Somebody does their thing seven, eight days later, they're closing. So, you know, it, it makes a huge difference. Awesome. All right, Michelle, you got a question? Are you still? Okay. Anybody else have any other questions? Did I miss anything in the chat? John, do you cover Florida? Yes, he does. Yes. He does. Evangelia, you need you need him in your life. So and awesome. I'll be there in March. I'll be in Florida in March. <laughs> oh, fun. My daughter's interested in a couple universities in Florida. So for some we're going there to do some uh um college visits. What are you? What uh, gonna, she's going to do uh, UCF in Orlando, and then we're going to be down in Miami for a few days do, looking at FAU and FIU, and then maybe come okay. back and do the golf side, my wife, in the summer. Okay. Where are you well, at? I'm in uh, Lake Worth, which is between West Palm and Boca Raton. Oh, nice. Very nice area. Yeah. I love awesome. it here. Awesome. We have a couple agents in Florida. Maybe you can have a meetup. All right, uh, Isabel. Yes, I have a question for John. We're right. gonna find out if you do uh, loans for uh, fix and flip for I-10 users. So that's two questions. We do loans for I-10 users all the time. We have a, a, a pretty robust uh, product line for that. Now that product is a brokered loan and it changes all the time. So I don't wanna tell you today what it is um, because tomorrow it could be different, but we do have a, that product line. Uh, and of course, I can offer it in all the states that I'm licensed in. Uh, when it comes to fixed and flips, we really don't uh, uh, dabble in that. We're going to be someone that has what is called early payoff against the loan officer. So you got to pretty much stay in the house for six months, make the payments. And most of the time, fix and flips are uninhabitable houses. So uh, I refer them to uh, more of a hard money kind of loan. Uh, if you say it's a fix and it's going to be a long-term fix or flip, like, hey, somebody's going to buy this, have it as an investment property for two years so they don't pay capital gains, and then flip it. We do have a, a what is called the conventional home style renovation program, which is somebody who's going to you know spend the time to do it. The problem with any lender renovation loans is typically you cannot GC yourself. You cannot be the general contractor. So a lot of people want to internally do it, and they don't want to pay a GC the premium. Well, that's where it, sometimes it conflicts because we're lending money out there with draws. And how can we trust that you're going to get the deal done, even though you are great? 
So that's kind of the caveat to that. And we okay, have, thank you. And we have a whole bunch of people on this call that are um, niching in to downsizing in age restricted communities. Uh, you want to talk to us a little bit about reverse mortgage and how amazing it is? Uh, yes, reverse mortgages are great. A lot of people think reverse mortgages are for senior citizens who are losing their house and it's the um, parachute to save the house. That doesn't work anymore. Um, over the last 10 years, there's been a lot of uh, changes to reverse mortgages. You have to pass the litmus test of financial stability. It's not a credit score driven program. It's not a debt to income ratio program. Uh, it is a program where we're using the equity in the home to uh, pretty much absorb the payments that you'll never make. And so it needs to be somebody who is somewhat stable and it's going to be uh, on a refinance. It's going to be somebody with a lot of equity. You have to be 62 and older. Um, your non-borrowing spouse can be under 62, except in the state of Texas. Um, it's a wonderful program. Uh, but what people don't realize, there's a thing called H for P, and it just stands for HECM, which is the acronym for reverse mortgage. For P stands for purchase. Uh, the reverse mortgage for purchase program is a great program for individuals who have limited income, don't want to make the payments. But the difference between a reverse mortgage and paying cash is what? Still no payments, but you get to save all that extra money. And sometimes, depending on how old you are, that extra money could be tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars where you can have your house, have your cash, live your life, and still have no payment because I do not know of anybody in 26 years that gets a deed of trust after they sell their house and put it under their pillow at night and go, yay, I have my deed, there's no lien. Who cares if you're out $200,000 because you paid cash. Right. Yeah. So the the best clients to um go after for this are the ones relocating to your area with a with a bunch of cash, you know, and they're gonna pay cash down or, you know, 50% down or something like that. And it's just like, okay, well, have you thought of this? So getting them connected with a good lender that knows that product is huge and they will be thanking you and they will have so much more money in the bank and they'll still not have a payment. Um, you know, and I know as all of you realtors, we love cash. We love cash deals. It's super easy, right? Well, it's not all about us and easy. It's about them. So you want to make sure you're taking care of your clients because when you do that, guess what? They're going to tell their friends that you took really good care of them and you told them about this amazing program. Blah, 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 blah. And guess what? You're going to be doing it for them too. So well, let me add a couple of things on that. Number one is a lot of people come to Vegas and they think Vegas is cheap, but we used to be pretty cheap. We're not anymore. Now we're not um, San Francisco. We're not Boston. We're not New York City, but we're also not Des Moines, Iowa. OK, and anybody who's on here from Des Moines, Iowa, I just use that as my joke all the time because it's the center <laughs> of the country. OK, now, with that being said, so people come here and say, Wendy, I got five hundred thousand dollars cash. And then they say a word called Summerlin. And Wendy goes, that's not going to buy a 500. You're not going to buy your dream house in Summerlin. That's a part of Las Vegas for $500,000 cash. But what if we give them a $500,000 down payment and buy a $700,000 house? Okay. The other thing is, I know everybody in here loves the word cash. But what I have experienced in all my years from all my realtors is cash buyers are the ones who are the least invested and they'll just walk away. They'll walk away with no reason. They'll just, because they're not committed. All they have is cash. They haven't met with their lender you know they, i've had cash buyers put in multiple offers with multiple realtors and then all of a sudden the realtor gets screwed because the one realtor showed him another house so um that's just my take on cash but you're 100 right people come out to vegas all the time i have all this cash which it is it's real cash but it's not enough to buy that house right there if it's a reverse mortgage and they're taking out a reverse mortgage for purchase that's on the home that they already own no. So they're buying a second home? No, no. They're, so if somebody coming in, let's say they sold their house up uh, in Massachusetts and they're moving to, to one of the states I'm licensed in and they say I got, and let's say the number is 30%. They have to have a 30% or 70% worth of equity in the house. They just put 70% down on the house and they buy this house, the new house to live in. So this reverse mortgage has to be your primary residence and they will send you notices each and every year where you have to validate that you still live in the house. All it is is a traditional loan with a boatload of money down because you don't make payments every month. 
And so the payments are coming out of the equity of the new home. Correct. Okay. Yep. Because because if there's a thousand dollars in interest that you're not paying, guess what? Now your three hundred thousand dollar loan goes to three hundred one, then three hundred two. You know what I'm saying? It goes okay. up exponentially. That's why we expect everybody to live to about ninety nine, right? So somebody who's closer to ninety nine is going to put less money down. Somebody who's sixty two has thirty seven years, quote unquote, to live. So we're going to want a a big number down. And but yet that extra thirty percent on five hundred thousand might be an extra hundred fifty thousand dollars they get to keep in their pocket. And so whatever is left, they can still sell it for. If they want to sell the house, they can still sell it. There's two hundred thousand dollars still in equity after they've paid you off. They can still. Yep. Sell if, if, if if somebody dies and all of a sudden the the son and daughter come to you, Claire, and say, "Mom, Dad just died. We need to sell your house," but they have a reverse mortgage. Don't fret. Just get the death certificate to the servicer, get the payoff. And if there's equity in the house, clear, you're going to sell that house, right? You're going to sell that house and the equity is going to go, uh, the proceeds are going to go to the heirs, uh, depending on what, you know, legal ramifications is the house legally allowed to be sold? Is it in a trust? Is it going to probate? Has it been done the right way? Um, if for some reason it's upside down, but yet it's mom and dad's house, which was grandma and grandpa's house, which was great grandma and grandpa's house, the heirs to the throne can buy it for 95 cents on the dollar of the value, not what they owe. It's a non-recourse loan. So it's a guaranteed government short sale. So the kids can buy and save this house that's worth 300,000, but mom and dad owed 450. That $150,000 loss is absorbed by the federal government's insurance policy. That's why it's a one of the best loans and it's a guaranteed no recourse against the heirs. Um, nobody comes after you. Like mom and dad default on a credit card, they're probably coming after you, right? Mom and dad, quote unquote, die and default on this loan that's upside down nobody will ever come after you so interesting thank you very let's talk more about it because i got a great guy in massachusetts who actually referred um um a very very affluent client to me a couple years ago and um i think uh, you guys would be a good model match that'd be great i'll email you yeah email me was there a minimum age requirement 62, 62. That's you got to be 62 awesome. one a person living in the home could be 62 so that's another thing there's a, there's a lot of mothers and daughters that are 62 and 87. They live together. You don't have to be married. Uh, there's a lot of people that um, create um, companionship partnerships. Um, sometimes it's same sex, but it's not, it's, it's just two women, two men. They both lost their wives. They both lost their husbands. They're both 65. They're like, we go to bingo every week. Why don't we just live together? We'll do a reverse mortgage. So, I mean, there's a lot of things you can do. But if you're non, so if you, but if you have a 75 year old man with a 50 year old wife, we run the numbers off the 50 year old wife. But if you're in the state of Texas, all borrowers or spouses have to be 62. Awesome. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for being on the call and answering everybody's question. Did everybody get their questions answered? I'm going through the chat. I think, I think we did. I think we're good. So a um, couple things. Uh, we're getting ready for Tech Tuesday VIP, where we go into the VIP Zoom room, and I help you press the buttons. So if you guys do need more help with stuff and actually implementing and actually pressing the buttons, uh, the link is in the chat. Um, another link that's in the chat is if you haven't filled out the Tech Tuesday uh, resources form, uh, do that so that you can get the replay. Right. If you've already filled it out, you don't need to fill it out again. It just makes Joanna crazy. <laughs> so, so anyway, and then all of John's info is in the chat. If you are in his state or if you need a good lender in your state, he can connect you with someone. So make sure you reach out. Uh, that way you can have all the cool tools. John, do you have a question for us? A quick question, and you may have answered it and I missed it. If that's the case, sorry. But on the um, the reverse mortgage, if you've got a spouse that isn't on the loan, but they're under 62 and the 62 year old guy that's on that is on the loan passes away. So now you've got a loan, a reverse mortgage loan that is for the owner occupant and the spouse is one of the occupants. Is she going to be um, forced to sell or buy it out? Or she can she, she stays her. until she dies because they're legally married. Because okay. they're legally married, she stays until she dies. Now, the caveat is if you do it as a reverse mortgage, 
there are opportunities for lines of credit. Now, I don't want to get too involved. So the, so anybody who wants to call me, email me, let's talk about it. But there's lines of credit. If there's available money on your line of credit and you die, the, the credit line closes. So the wife can't access it because she was never on the loan because she's still on the deed of the house. Okay. Yeah. Now, if for some reason, most of the time for purchases, people, if you need 70% down or 65% down, you just put that down. So you really don't have a line of credit because they just bought the house uh, specifically for the no payment, then that wife, I don't care if she's 61 or 35, she's tied to it because she's legally married and she stays in that house until she leaves the house by selling it, leaves the house by passing or leaves the house by going into some sort of care facility that she'll never come back. And then that would be the responsibilities of her heirs to inform the lender that mom's in a care facility and she's never coming back. And that's when they would call the note due. And when that happens, you have six months to sell the house or refinance it. And then unless there's an issue, you're almost guaranteed to get um, two three-month extensions. So if mom and dad die today, there's you there's a probability of having almost a year to sell it. But most people would want to try to sell it sooner than that. That's why you're guaranteed that six months and can't ask for two three-month extensions. All right, going back real quickly to the instance where you've got a married couple, one is under 62, one is over 62, you've got a line of credit, um, but they, they can't call the line of credit. That just gets frozen. It just gets frozen. So unless they unless the husband, we'll pick on the husband being older, unless he dies in an accident that you are not prepared for, as long as he's still alive, take that money from the line of credit because they'll freeze it as soon as you tell him he dies. But if he dies on a Monday... You tell him he dies on a, told him he dies, they'd freeze the uh, credit on a Thursday because that's when you told him and you took the money on a Tuesday, that you could have problems. You missed the boat. Yeah, you kind of missed the boat. Just like I know people sadly have used credit cards of dead people. Don't ever do that. Yeah. Okay? yeah. That, that stuff gets that, even if it's your money, even if you're just waiting, you know, you got to look for other means. And that's why, you know, setting yourself up your parents, your grandparents up properly with trust and wills. And depending on every state's different, but state of Nevada, we're a probate state. If you don't have your fares in the line, you're going to start paying a crap load of money to attorneys to hopefully fix your problems or your, your uh, uh, mom and dad's problems or grandma and grandpa's. Yep. And so my client's got stage four cancer and he's not in hospice yet, but maybe he's should be in hospice. Pump out the line of credit now and, Yep. And then it freezes, and then the devil takes the hindmost when the under 62 person moves on. Yeah. Yep. And so now that under 62 person, especially if she is healthy and she's younger, I mean, even by a, a, a year when they got it, I mean, literally she could live there except paying taxes, insurance, HOA, and maintenance for the next 40 years of her life. Plus, she's got the cash that was available on that line of credit before her husband, you know, unfortunately passes. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Another yeah. good reason to use lenders that know what they're doing. <laughs> right? is that the All this gray expensive? hair is earned, guys. This this is not makeup. I'm not into fashion. This gray hair is earned. 1998. Those, I've been in it. Are those two extensions that you talked about? Are they expensive? No, you just have to request them. So they're free? I mean, there's no charge? Yeah, I don't want to guarantee the exact cost because I don't know what the servicer is on the back end, but okay. you it's a process that you go through. My point is, is on the six month one day, the you know, the, the federal government's not coming in and, and going Waco on you. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's still you just have to say, Hey, I'm moving. We didn't right get now, our ducks in a row, our our affairs are not ready. You know, it's month five. We're gonna need an extension. What is the process for that? Because the end servicer. Most reverse mortgages are government backed. Some aren't. So I don't want to overspeak my and, and use a, a, an exact yes or no on that. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> well, I see a bunch of emails. I see patients I already replying to a bunch of people. I just want to say awesome. thank you, thank you, thank you. And and Wendy, um, you thank know, you. at another point in time, please bring me back to Tech Tuesday. This has been amazing. Awesome. Yep. Yeah, we will be definitely diving into more stuff about mortgages later on this year because it's just, you know, something that we deal with every day. And so everybody has a ton of questions. All right. Very good. Thank you so much. And if you are uh, registered for Tech Tuesday VIP, I'll see you in the VIP room. Have a great week, guys. See you next week. Bye-bye.